Merhabalar, hoş geldiniz. Ee, konuşma İngilizce olacak için e, başlangıcı da İngilizce yapacağız. Uh, welcome, thank you for coming. Uh, we're very, very pleased to have you and Kana Mustafa with us today, whose exhibition is on the three floors upstairs. It's called the Promise Exhibition. My name is Durgo. I worked on this exhibition together with my colleague Narve Ergara and Gülsün Kara Mustafa. It was a great uh, experience and we call it a bit of an archaeological work. We worked on it for the past few months. Um, and the works in the exhibition span uh, 40 years of Gülsün Kara Mustafa's career, but also Turkish political history. So it's, I hope you got to see it, or if you haven't yet, you'll be able to see it after the talk. Um, in the coming days. Um, we're very proud to have Gusun here. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate the input of my young curators for the exhibition upstairs. Actually, it was a wonderful work together, and we built up a very, uh, you know, a nice exhibition in, uh, uh, in, a, in a small time probably, but it needed so much time to, to construct it. Um, well, actually, whenever I'm asked to make a talk or hearing like this, I always have, uh, have a, a possibility of talking about my works. And sometimes I gather them together like, you know, works on migration, works on my childhood, works on uh, several subjects. And they become quite a strong uh, topic for my talk. But now I feel <laughs> quite helpless because uh, all the works probably mainly uh, uh, are upstairs and you can go and see them because they are displayed in a very comprehensive way. So there's no, no meaning for me to, to talk about the works themselves so that I would like to skip that, you know. Uh, the exhibition is talking for itself. Um, but when I looked at the whole exhibition, uh, thinking what I would talk uh, about in, in, this, uh, in this hearing, I, I thought that I could create a background with it. Because, you know, uh, in all the works, there is a, a kind of uh, connotation or a relationship uh, with my own history. So maybe uh, for you, it would be interesting to hear a little bit about my own history, about my own life, about what phases I have been through and what experiences I had in life so that they, they come out as my works that you see up, upstairs. So I said, you know, I should have some captions to talk about. Maybe the first caption should be the uh, childhood. Because as you see in the exhibition, there are so many, uh, not so many, but some works which refer to my childhood. And they, uh, as well as referring to myself, they refer to a period of time, to, to a political uh, situation, or to, to uh, uh, a time which, which really talks about its history. So I said it would be nice to, to, to, to start with my childhood. Um, actually, I was born one year after uh, the Second World War finished. At the time, uh, Turkey uh, resisted to join the war for a very long time, but in the, in the last period of the war, uh, they, they declared war against Germany, and they, they became, became the enemy of Germany. And uh, when the war finished, they were, they were aside uh, in, the, in the war, but you know, we had not been uh, wounded so much 
by the situation of the war. On the other hand, uh, uh, I was born in Ankara, and Ankara was, was a, a kind of castle for those who were running away from, from the Hitler regime and from the war itself, because you know it received, with Ataturk's uh, consent, it received uh, the Jewish intellectuals, Jewish professors, uh, and also those who were against uh, Hitler regime, uh, they were all in Ankara helping a new nation to be built uh, throughout this time. And that was a very interesting uh, situation for the new Republic of Turkey. Our, our um, universities and our, uh, were everywhere you could see these very important professors who are who are putting uh, who, who have their input in the intellectual life of Turkey, the young Turkey. Um, I grew up in an atmosphere like this in Ankara, a very young city. You know, it's like like um, uh, all the buildings and things, uh, everything was, was new. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, my, my father was, uh, was uh, a journalist and, uh, and a writer. And also he was a radio person because he was an announcer in the radio. And uh, he was uh, actually married to, to a woman who also works in radio house as an archive. Uh, person. So uh, I was born, I may say, uh, literally in the radio house because my pram was always on the radio corridors and all those artists who were performing for the radio programs and things like that, uh, they, they knew me growing up and they were really my aunts and uncles, you know. So from the work that you see upstairs, you know, the chronographia, which has a reference to my life. Uh, actually, my father was also writing for, for a radio magazine, which is, uh, you know, uh, which has the covers uh, upstairs in the, in the work, uh, Chronographia. Uh, and, and in each uh, issue, there was a, a, a, a, an article by my father about, about uh, the radio and so on. So this was a kind of reference to my, a strong reference. This work was a strong reference to my childhood. Um, actually, uh, the, uh, the um, brain team uh, was always gathered in Ankara. Although those people were from Istanbul, like my father, you know, he, who had his family in Istanbul, born in Istanbul, and uh, had ha, had every connection with Istanbul. He was he was uh, he had to go to Ankara to to establish the Ankara uh, radio and work there. So, like him, lots of people from from uh, Istanbul were to be the. Uh, civil uh, were working as civil servants in Ankara, but their hearts were actually in Istanbul. And my childhood was like like uh, going and coming back between Istanbul because the family was there, uh, house was there, and you know, uh, it was it, we were spending so much time on train. And uh, of course, again, you can see a work. Uh, which, which has a photo of mine uh, on the train window uh, where uh, my father is, uh, you know, saying goodbye to us while we're going to uh, Istanbul. And, uh, you know, with all the uh, rhyming words around me, those were the, uh, those were the uh, small um, uh, poems that I had recited during this time, they were memorized uh, by my teachers and so on, you know, uh, as all those children who were to memorize all those silly poems at those times. 
So this work really refers to, to, to a time when uh, this, uh, you know, the, um, the shuttle between Istanbul and Ankara was in, in the lives of these Ankara people, you know. And uh, actually, yeah, this was again a, a, a work which related to my childhood. Actually, um, I should also, also talk about the Iron Curtain, which was my nightmare, you know, as a word in my, in my childhood, because, you know, this was the time after the war, the 50s were a time where Turkey was so closed and uh, you didn't have any connection to the world. There were, we were we were always shouting out that we, we are connected to NATO, CENTO, and we are surrounded by an iron curtain uh, towards the Soviet Union. So that was another thing which, was, uh, which I was uh, remembering when I looked at my childhood. And, uh, and uh, with my childhood notebook, you know, you can, you can uh, clearly see this uh, iron curtain feeling uh, and the Cold War feeling that it is always there with, with, with, with what, we, what we do with our uh, childish problems and, you know, childish poems and so on, which we write in our notebooks. Well, then, uh, I would like to start another caption, uh, which should be the youth. Uh, when I finished the only school in Ankara, which is called the Ankara College, where I learned my English, which is not very perfect, but uh, that, is, uh, that was the time that I felt the urge that I should, I should tear out this feeling about, about this city, so I should push myself into, into the city that I want to live in. And the only school for art was in Istanbul then, and the only school that would give me uh, what I want, you know, as a, as, as a, uh, as a young uh, person who wishes to continue with art, that was, that was the only way to go to Istanbul. So with, with all, uh, you know, uh, the, despite all the conflicts with my family, I pushed myself to Istanbul. For one year I lived by myself after, uh, you know, uh, entered the academy. And later my, my family found out the possibility of um, uh, making it a, a reason to come to Istanbul. And then they moved to Istanbul and then our Istanbul life began. In the academy, actually our academy was uh, totally a uh, French style academy. You know, we were taught anatomy and, uh, you know, perspective, uh, you, know, you know, all those things, uh, everything to do with, with this classical uh, education, which I liked very much because they, they, they really have an input uh, for you that, that really uh, gives you a, a good base for what you want to do. But at the time, it was totally speaking about uh, abstract art and nothing else. So abstract art was the main, uh, main uh, uh, thing that we learned in school when we, when we uh, came to, to graduation. Throughout time, that time, I was quite a rebel, you know. I, I, I was not at all satisfied with what I was being taught. And uh, actually, the, the, what I wanted was something more towards life. You know, I wanted to grasp something from life because it was the thing that attracted me. And I remember my, my teacher telling me, Please, Gülsün, don't do painting. Don't, don't go for painting, but go and be a journalist, be a cineast, or do something, but don't be a painter. 
I said, okay, you know, I, I do not like this uh, peinture situation, but I cannot give up painting. So I had to continue with something like, maybe they didn't like it, but something like, uh, something to express myself. Maybe I would call them the pictures, not paintings, but you know, that was, that was okay with me, but that was not okay with them, and I was not a very, very good uh, student then. Um, towards the la last years of the academy, uh, 1968 movement burst out in, uh, in France. Of course, the waves of 1968 was immediately felt in Istanbul, and in our academy it was felt more because we were, either, we were a group of students who were really advanced in, in political thinking and so on. So uh, the, the very, very interesting thing, or the important thing we did was, in 1969, uh, we, we occupied our school and stayed in, uh, in school for about one month until our wishes about education was to be uh, taken seriously. But that was, not, uh, that was just the beginning. You know, things were getting more and more uh, tough in those days, and you know, we were we were uh, feeling that that something was coming, and we we finished up with the 1971 military coup, which was a very severe thing for ourselves, for the students, for the intellectuals, and for the working class and for, for everyone maybe, which really made Turkey suffer a lot. And through that time, uh, I was imprisoned, my husband was imprisoned, he stayed in prison for two and a half years. And all the things that we thought would be, you know, so, you know, perfect for the future because we wanted to change the world, we, we learned that the world could not be changed very easily. So then another era began for us, you know. Um, what can I say? The military coups. Actually, the military coups, uh, the one that we have been imprisoned in 1971, uh, is not the first one. I have to go back to my childhood or youth, early youth, and talk about this 1960s uh, military coup. In 1960, uh, actually, the, the whole uh, government was put into trial, and as you know, three of them were hanged, and my father then was in prison. So I had witnessed being in prison and you know uh, suffering this kind of things while I was you know finishing the middle school so you know I was experienced but I wish to remind you something today it is the 12th of September this is the anniversary of the third military coup that we have lived through so uh, I may say that from these th th three uh, military coups that I have lived through, the third one was, was the most difficult one because, you know, maybe we are still living the wounds of the third ones now. You know, it's not finished. Um, well, if you, if you live, uh, a life like this, which is too much related to, to daily uh, changes, uh, political changes, and things like that. As an artist, you cannot, you cannot uh, do anything else, but you know, if you are an observer, you observe. And then uh, when you observe, you, t you, you have the urge to turn it into what you know, you know, nothing else but what you know. What I knew was to turn it into art. So uh, actually, 
you know, I couldn't do anything else, but I only could do my art, which you, you, you will meet upstairs or you have observed upstairs, that it is totally related to life. Um, those that I, I uh, try to talk about in my art actually uh, is, is not, you know, maybe I go to this later, you know, because I have to make another caption here and then uh, talk about the very big turn in the life of, of, uh, of everybody, probably, in the, uh, from, the, from the last century, the last decade of um, 20th century. Uh, which which all, I also lived very uh, in a very tough way. Uh, well, I should I should talk about the artist as a wanderer or artist on the road. Uh, with the 90s, you know, the beginning of 90s, it is like um, many things have changed. You know, uh, the the. With the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, with the fall of Soviet Union, that was the, the, the very important part of uh, 19th century's you know, uh, traumas. And then there came a time when the paradigms changed places. And for art, the center and periphery situation has changed. So as an artist, I may say that I took the advantage of it, you know, because, you know, when, when, when you are doing your art and until then you have one uh, possibility that there is New York, Paris, and London as centers, and you cannot push into it at all. There is no way that you can push into, into those centers and you are a peripheric artist, you know. And then something changes uh, with the 90s, and then you have your ways that you can collaborate with the world and so on. So that was my greatest pri privilege, that from then on, I became, a, I became an artist on the road. And uh, that, was, that was a time when I began to uh, to make my work not only in Turkey but everywhere in the world, wherever I am invited, wherever I can, I can produce work with little money, with with with heart, you know, with with anything, any any possibility. I was to go around and do my art. Actually, uh, what really made me happy throughout those journeys and everything. Uh, as you see, I'm using my own connotations. I'm using sequences of my own life. But when I was, when I was showing, for example, one of my work in Havana Biennale, you know, a girl coming, w watching my video and coming to me and saying, I'm from Chile and I know what it is. You don't have to tell me anything because we have the we we share the same kind of history. Then going to Greece and showing the memory of a square which you see upstairs, which is about Taksim Square. Someone from Greece comes to you and says, "Yeah, you can take." away the footage from one side and I put my footage into this film so it works with the family forever you know I can do that and I believe anyone with its own history they can relate to these works and they can become one so this is the this is the very um, mm, how can I say this is the feeling that I share uh, with the people that I, with, that I show uh, my work and, uh, you know, the audience is 
very important for me, and I get my feedback from the audience. And maybe from this moment on, you, sh you should ask me questions, and then I continue. Yeah, I need your questions. It could be about the exhibition. It could be about anything, you know. I, I really would like you to, to, to say something, to ask something. I'll start. Yes. <laughs> Um, I think that one of the captions could also be cinema. Oh. Um, maybe you could also talk about your time with, um, in the Turkish film industry and how that affected your work as well. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, uh, I'm too much concentrated in, into this uh, exhibition upstairs because we, share, we, we gave too much energy to it. But as you see, uh, there is another part of the exhibition which is in South Galata, where I have a film upstairs uh, shown as a cinema. Uh, this is uh, the piece Men Crying. And uh, actually, this film is, uh, uh, this project is done by me. And uh, I invited a very famous Turkish uh, director to shoot the films for me, and he invited the very famous actor, actors of the 60s for this film to cry for himself. So this means that I have a little bit of relationship to the cinema. And uh, actually, yes, I had. Between, between 1984 to 1991, I worked in the cinema field. Um, uh, this is why my films are so much looking like the uh, Turkish films or things like that, you know? Because uh, first I have worked as an art director in the cinema field, and then I directed my own film, with, uh, with, co-directed, I should say, with a friend, uh, with a writer friend of mine, and we, we both immediately were invited to Cannes Film Festival where we experienced this fantastic festival with the uh, red carpets and things like that. And uh, we were nominated for Camera d'Or with that film. And also uh, this film had the opportunity of visiting very many festivals like Tokyo Film Festival, uh, Toronto Film Festival, and Los Angeles, uh, Cairo, and uh, you know, lots of uh, festivals. And uh, yeah, uh, this experience of cinema is a very important thing in my life. And uh, to video field, I, uh, after this experience, actually, I couldn't go into video field because video was a, a minor thing for me because it wasn't so strong as the cinema, but after 2000, after the uh, entrance of this uh, digital uh, medium, I really wanted to make films, and I think I'm continuing with making video films, yeah. Mehmet Onaner, we're from the same generation. Yeah. I was born in Istanbul, but we graduated from the same school in Ankara. Yeah. So your experience in general is very familiar to me. I moved to Ankara from Istanbul in 1953. I traveled all through my life between the two cities. You became an artist. I was a civil servant. Now I'm a retired person and living in Istanbul when I was born. Now, as an artist and as ha having experienced the both cities and this period of the history, do you think that the basic Ankara peasants, culture, or whatever you name it, 
have a real importance for your future career, which you developed in Istanbul. Because basically, Istanbul people consider that Ankara state <laughs> bureaucracy, forget about Ankara. And I've spent 53 years in Ankara, and I don't like Ankara. But now, at this age, I appreciate the basis that Ankara has given to me. And in most people in Istanbul overlook this situation in a very, I may say, spoiled manner. Uh, from an artistic point of view, and being an internationally uh, acknowledged person, what would you say about this relationship of Ankara Istanbul and its contribution to this personal uh, capacity of yourself? Well, uh, Ankara gave me uh, a, a, a great input for my works, which I'm really thinking over now, uh, on modernism. Because, you know, modernism was first experienced in Ankara, and it was toughly experienced in An Ankara, you know. Everything was in order as a modernist city by the time we were there. But throughout the time, as you know, everything has, has been erased and nothing is left from our Ankara, which, we, which is in our minds. Now, uh, actually, I'm really dealing with some, uh, some uh, in my, some of my works, uh, with this modernist Ankara, which gives clues about very many things in our history. So it is quite important for me. Yeah. More? You said that you have lived uh, three cups, and uh, you said that the toughest one is what, uh, that was the, the 1981. Why you think that? Uh, is the toughest one. It is the toughest one because you know it it it covered uh, a more uh, a greater area. Maybe maybe you know it was it was uh, yeah you know the reasons why I say this you know it's very obvious that you know uh, the the the the the war was greater than I can say. I, I really think that it was it was the worst, it's covering covering uh, uh, southeast Anatolia uh, everywhere. You know, it was not very local. The the the seventy was more uh, pressure over over the intellectuals and workers and so on. But this covered the whole country, uh, and it was really really a tough time. I must say. With your permission, may I continue the same question? Uh, have you ever felt sorry, sorry for any action uh, as an activist? Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, have you ever felt sorry for any action? Yeah, have I ever had? ever felt yes. sorry? Yes. For one of my actions? Yes. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank no, you. no. <laughs> No, no sorries. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Uh, hi, my name is Jan Kaila. I come from Finland. Thank you very much for your very interesting speech. Uh, would you like to uh, make a comment on today's art? I mean, you've been talking historically about the Cold War yeah. and, and all yeah. that stuff, and then about your career changing. But how do you feel? I mean, we're now just starting a big Biennale tomorrow, and yeah. the art world is going to war. Yeah. What do you think? Well, actually, I'm very sorry that I may not speak about the Biennial because I have been occupied in this space uh, for three days, you know, since the opening, that I couldn't see much of the Biennial. But I know something that it really deals in a good way with with with the uh, with the uh, mm, you know 
what, with what we live nowadays, you know, it's not, it's not uh, out of nowhere and so on. Uh, actually, in general, speaking about art, uh, do you mean in Turkey or in general? Maybe in general we should talk about. Uh, maybe uh, I talked about the beginning of uh, 90s when, when all these uh, things changed rapidly after the, the, after the social changes. Uh, and then lots of artists were, were, uh, were totally uh, working in a way that they were so much related to society, to, to, to political uh, issues and things like that. Uh, then uh, I think nowadays something is changing because the market is entering into the field. Uh, I do not think that it would, uh, it would affect the whole thing, but you know, these changes are inevitable. Uh, in the beginning, when we were doing art for, uh, without having any, any uh, market, any uh, future or anything uh, which, which would keep us going, you know, just for the sake of continuation of what we do. Uh, now I think the artists are more into, mm, you know, they have galleries, they have, uh, uh, they have the art fairs which are very fashionable and so on and so forth. But I don't think that when the doors are open, you know, there's, there's no way to shut them and close them. There, there, there might be a moment when everything about that could be forgotten uh, and then uh, another wave of uh, very political work or very political art can, may enter the field. You know, I, I think it is. It is. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, uh, I can't wait. Uh, you know, it's a very wavy uh, situation. And also, what is different from from the time that I, I began to make my art? Uh, now the communication possibilities are extremely high, you know. Uh, nobody can feel himself alone as we did in the beginning of 70s, 80s or 90s. You know, now with one push you can, you can communicate with the world, so you can, you can uh, give your message to the world in, in, in, in a second. Uh, you can distribute it in, in, with one push so it's, it's a very, very important moment, which is quite different from what we have experienced before. Okay. Yes. Uh, my question is about your relationship with painting. In the exhibition, um, we can see a series of paintings starting from 1972 to late 80s. And then there's also the Prompts painting series, which we also only see the last example of it in 2004. So there's a, a gap in 1990s where we, it's really hard to find any paintings, and after 2004. Can you give us the details about the, yeah. the gap between these years? First of all, I have told you that you know I was not interested in, in this stuff uh, like uh, peinture, which was taught us in, in the academy uh, and you know I had this urge to make these pictures of paintings which were like like uh, talking about life and uh, I have series of these paintings upstairs uh, which are you know uh, which are dated from 1972 actually there is one series of paintings which which are quite important because I'm releasing them for the first time these are the uh, uh, prison paintings, uh, which uh, I found out, uh, we both found out in, in our archives, and we decided that we should show it now, because I never wanted to exploit this feeling with the prison or whatever while they were done. You know, they were like notes that I took during the time uh, when I got out of the prison. So. Uh, paintings for me is something like that. It's something 
that talks about life, probably. E either you call it the painting, either you call it something else. Actually, uh, I should here mention about one project that I started in the 90s, uh, uh, when there was this debate, you know, there was this discussion, oh, there is this contemporary art, and contemporary art erased everything in life, it's there, and painting is dead. Is it dead? You know, well, I'm a painter. I always like to call my pa myself pa painter. And uh, uh, at that time I said, yeah, I should have one project in the meaning of uh, contemporary art, actually. Uh, I should start one project which is called the Promised Paintings. Why Promised? You know, for me, Istanbul is an icon. And I, I love this iconic side of Istanbul. So I can be an icon maker. And as an icon maker, actually, I do not have to paint anything. I always am the, you know, the icon makers are the hand of God. You know, they, they paint whatever is given to them. So I could be a painter like this. And then I uh, actually, uh, you know, started this series. And I started to paint. Afterwards, we, we began to show them. And uh, I should confess that throughout the time, uh, throughout 90s, when I was thoroughly working on, on my installations or film projects or whatever, it, with, with, all my, uh, with all my travels and so on, these paintings, these promised paintings, were the things that I lived on because they were the only things that were sold by that time. And that, that gave me a privilege. And then uh, I continued this uh, uh, promised painting project until uh, 2004. Uh, then I was very busy with my installations and other things that I had to I didn't have time to continue with them, but it is a continuing project, a lifetime project. It stays there, you know. So I keep my personality as a, as an artist, as as a painter, you know. So that's it. And you said that uh, in your uh, uh, at the beginning of your career uh, there was Paris, London, other centers, and you felt at the periphery. Mm -hmm. You have been making witness and maker of uh, Istanbul becoming a center. You have, been, you have the history <laughs> some way, this, the, uh, the memory, of not only artistic, and also the seminal artists for all the generation. Probably I could say there are the two generations of artists, I quite known artists from the, in Turkey. And some way you are a model, and some way you are, there is this generosity, generosity uh, relation generous relation that I guess not everybody knows. I wanted to, there, you can choose which aspect of this. I mean, uh, if more uh, this being in all these first exhibitions on the Balkans, or if more what is the relation with the younger generation, Turkish uh, generation? Younger generation, yeah, okay. Um, mm, uh, actually, this is nice that you have mentioned. Um, yeah, we started as a group of artists, uh, you know, beginning of 90s that we expressed ourselves in, in not in other ways but you know the, the contemporary way and uh, actually from that uh, the, the beginning of 80s that is and then from that moment on we uh, we combined together you know we, we came together with a younger generation in the 90s uh, with whom they were they were really in their early twenties, like like Halil Altındere, like like um, you know very many Hale Tenger and so on, and then we began to continue with them. Actually, it was it was uh, it was interesting that I, I was from an older generation, but what we were showing uh, didn't show that you know there were two generations, but we showed together and continued together. Uh, until uh, until uh, you know maybe 2005 or six 
And from then on, you know, I think I have been more matured, so I continued myself. Uh, but with the younger generation, uh, now they're on their way, and I'm very proud that they're doing so well. Uh, but maybe this exhibition out upstairs would help them, this very new generation, to understand what is, what is in the basis of what they're doing. So I'm very happy that this exhibition took place because, you know, uh, it is important. They never can see uh, the, an output altogether, maybe, uh, so that they, they will experience this and that would be uh, good for me, uh, their feedback, and maybe good for them to, to understand what has been done, you know. So, so to, create, to create links somewhere, yeah. and this is... Yeah, I think this, this exhibition will create a link in between. That's it. Well, thank you for coming, you know. I'm so